All right, welcome back to Flag of Socks, the podcast, episode 79. Today on the show, inner city crime is picking up, and progressives say it's because the libraries are closed, even though no one can read. We'll tell you all the other excuses they're making as well. Then we find out that transphobia and racism are two wings of the same bird in this week's Cringe of the Week. And last but not least, moms are having trouble with unmotivated sons who just want to play video games all day. We'll give you advice on how to fix that. All this and more, it's Fleckus Talks, a podcast, episode 79, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than actions because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. Fleckus cool. cool. Talks, a podcast featuring Richard Bradford. Guys, are you worried about not having enough emergency food on hand? In case of emergency, we know how fast grocery stores can be stripped bare and left with nothing. And then what happens? Then you're relying on the government for food, and that's not where you want to be. My Patriot Supply is making a special offer for everyone to help them prepare for what's coming. If you buy a three-month emergency food kit, My Patriot Supply is going to throw in a free water filtration system, a high-quality water filter that you can use to get clean drinking water or water to cook with. Very important, very good thing to have. This My Patriot Supply three month emergency food kit gives you everything you need to stay healthy and stay nourished during tough times, giving you over 2,000 calories a day, which is very important to keep those energy levels up. Order today. The meals taste great, and you're going to get a free gravity powered water filtration system worth $279. Massive value. All you have to do is order a three month emergency food kit. Your emergency food supply and the free water filtration system will be shipped to your door in discreet boxes. Order today. Go to preparewithfleckus.com. That's preparewithfleckus.com. My Patriot Supply supports the show. Let's support them right back, and let's get those things we need prevent a disaster preparewithfleckus.com is the website link is in the description thank you to my patriot supply for supporting us let's get into housekeeping true one for one on the intro well done buddy that was actually a true one for one yeah welcome to housekeeping thank you for having (laughs) us episode 79 feels good uh feels real good all right obviously there's no more heart attacks and blood clot things happening yeah those stopped those fell off a cliff those stopped uh just in time for summer uh, unrelated, probably nothing. A chicken facility that had 20 million chickens blew up. Probably nothing. Yeah. Um, so let's move on. Nothing else to really get to there. Yep. Uh, obviously, we aren't doing doppelgangers anymore. Uh, but we have a couple if we were to continue the doppelganger section, mm-hmm. what we would have shown. So yeah. we have a couple of those. Richard Rapoy license plate. Yeah, not really a doppelganger, but somebody's uh, going around Kansas with a Rat Boy uh, license plate, and he's got a Trump Punisher. That could be logo. you. That could be me in a different life. So uh, shout out to Rat Boy uh, from Kansas. Yep. And then there's a band where the two people in the band look like me and you. There's you. We can't play this music probably, right? I think we can. All right. Maybe we'll get away with it. There's me on the drums. And there's Fleckus on the... Guitar, guitar, yeah. Maybe the bass. Yeah, I can't tell. It's the most important person in the band, the bass. Yep. Everything else revolves around them. And is there any others? Um, Gorlock the Destroyer. Do you want to bring up? Yeah. That was going to be yours. Yeah, but we're not doing Doppel Kangers anymore. <laughs> okay. Hey, all right. um, Let's move away from that. Then. Yeah, but Rapway had a viral tweet this week, Gorlock the Destroyer. Yeah, crazy viral, like 100K likes as of filming this episode. Um, it resonated with people. Yeah, it was uh, Fleckus doppelganger on the whatever podcast. They do the dating like they the basically a couple of semi right wing guys line up a bunch of dumb sorority girls and just uh, try to smash their worldview is what yeah. I would say. Yeah, yeah. And uh, basically ho shame them and stuff. So interesting podcast, but uh, it got me a viral tweet. So nice work. Nice work. Um, all right. Moving on. We have some important things to get to. It's a very important housekeeping. I think we have four pages of housekeeping. I have like nothing in the housekeeping folder, so I don't know how we're gonna possibly. It's get all to in here. <laughs> okay. We got some Rob stuff. We have some uh, Snarf Snarf Obanion updates as well. Okay, really quick, we had a little bit of a breakthrough here. Um, not on the show, just in our lives. Rap Boy and I, we live separate lives, but we also have some common things that we try to improve in our lives all the time. Mm-hmm. One of them is uh, dishes and plates and organization. So instead of using plates, we used to use paper dishes. Easy throwaway, easy cleanup. 
we've actually improved that. Now we're using plastic bins with like tissue. What's it called? Uh, parchment paper. I parchment think. Parchment paper, like they do at restaurants. So now you have make a sandwich or whatever, and you just put it in paper in a plastic bin, and then at the end you just crumble up the paper, throw it away, and the bin you can use a couple times before you wash it. Yeah, like those old Chicago style uh, hot dog stand red baskets. So that's what we're up to. It's a breakthrough. It's kind of like Americana. You know, as well. Yeah, it really is. Okay, we have a really big Snarf Snarf O'Banion update. If you guys are not familiar, uh, Snarf Snarf O'Banion is the fake rat persona that we've made up that we're now trying to insert into real life and make a real life person. So we've been moving the plot forward with the SSOB stuff. Um, We kind of have to give everyone like a backstory update. Mm. Just so everyone knows who Snarf Snarf O'Banion is. So when he blows up on the scene, we can all juice him up appropriately. Yeah. Uh, so Snarf Snarf O'Banion was in jail since 2013. Okay. Uh, he went to jail because a list, an A-list rapper who we're not going to say snitched on him and his crew. Uh, so he went to jail. There was a, He was involved in a bank robbery where one of the bank tellers got shot. Unfortunately. We don't know if he's the one who shot the woman. Someone did. He's in jail since 2013. Uh, but he went to jail. He never snitched. He got snitched on. He has all the receipts. He wrote 200 songs in jail that he just needs to record now. And he's going to be calling out all these fake ass hater rappers. Yeah. Uh, he's on a revenge tour, sort of like a get out of exactly. prison revenge tour. He's on a revenge tour. He's going to flip the industry on its head. Uh, Snarf Snarf O'Banion is his name. S-S-O-B. The B is lowercase. S-S-O is all uppercase. Um, so he's gonna be releasing all these new songs that he wrote in jail where he's calling out all these fake rappers. He's involved in everything. So if you guys are on No Jumper and you see them go, oh, FBG, Cayenne Pepper, Rob, DJ Fortnite or whatever. Lil Lotto stuck FBG Wooski with a bill. Exactly. You know, whatever the headlines are. Whatever the headlines are, you guys need to be in there commenting. SSOB was there. He filmed it, but he didn't turn the the, the video over to the cops. Yeah. Like whatever it is, SSOB, Snarf Snarf O'Banion is always involved. So we need you guys to be constantly plugging SSOB, but make sure you plug in accordance with his brand, which is he doesn't snitch. He doesn't do crimes anymore. He's rich. He has a lot of money. People think it's from the bank robbery. It's old hundreds. And he's... It's old. <laughs> And now he's in this. He's behind the scenes everywhere. So anytime you guys see a world star or a no jumper post, specifically no jumper, the most, yeah. And so Fleckus is SSOB. Fleckus, Fleckus's goal in the end of this, we're we're trying to write a rap song. We're trying to use kind of an AI voice generator. I don't want to spoil too many plans mm-hmm. that we have with Snarf Snarf, but um, we're going to try to basically create this character. And Fleckus, ha- you know, year of manifesting your delusions, Fleckus believes that we're going to get Snarf Snarf O'Banion posted on No Jumper after he takes a swing at another rapper yeah. and, like, disses him. And I'm like, okay, dude, you know that's, like, a 2 1% chance that it'll happen, right? Like, they have real people working there. Like, they they know who the players are. They don't just take, like, oh, Snarf Snarf O'Banion, new guy. So, well, the reason he doesn't have social media or songs is because he's been in jail. That's but part- he wrote 200. <laughs> that's part of the backstory. So, hey. we're creating someone in a lab. Fleckus is hopelessly delusional. I'm... A little bit delusional. He says 2%. I think it's about 40%. No. So SSOB, we are working on making a song. We have an Instagram. We have a person who's going to be SSOB. Yeah. We have a person. A full like actor, rapper type. And it, he's a real rapper. SSOB is a real person. He's been in jail. He wrote 200 songs. He's coming out of jail now. He's going to flip the rap game on his head. He's, it's real. Yeah. So stay tuned. Down. Stay tuned for that, for developments. Yeah. I think probably next episode. Yeah, exactly. We actually made our own No Jumper headline this week. Yeah. Um, what does it say? Well, it was during the uh, Tucker Carlson and Don Lemon mania. Mm-hmm. So they're they're obviously both gone. Um, and it's uh, I said, Richard Ratboy out at Fleckus Talks, the podcast, replaced by, quote, Jerry, who talks now. Fleckus spiraling. Which is funny, so. but it's also true. If you were to not be on the show, uh-huh. I would have Jerry in that second seat before I had nobody. That makes sense. And I would just talk to him and do a bit like, oh, he didn't reply, or maybe he reacts a little bit. It, you just can't do a show by yourself. 100%. I'm, and I'm, like, I'm in the bloodstream now. It's too late. We're on episode 79. Mm-hmm. You, you can't replace me. I'm like part of it. So, uh, you know, don't. Well, I was going to say something. Don't Stephen Crowder me. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I wouldn't. And I keep it 100, right? We have a nice situation here. Oh, 100%, dude. The, we're not we, going to have any Crowder we, issues here. Well, we love, and I, I don't say love the drama because we, we don't encourage that drama is a distraction, right? But we love seeing something and going, ah, how much that would never happen to us. Yeah. So that feels good. Yeah, we're in it for the long haul. Um, okay, let's move on. Don't forget to tickle this post, juice the algo, leave us some comments, some tickle, tickle juice. It goes a long way. Last week's episode is over 100K views. Huge. One of our better performing episodes. That was always like the benchmark goal. If we can hit 100K views, we're a real show. We're hitting 100K views. After 79 episodes, we're finally a real show. And a huge part of that is tickling. tickling you the tickling. Algo. Yeah. So, so leave shout that out tickle, to everybody. Juice. Um, and also we've had multiple episodes hit over hundred K the next benchmark is going to be one fifty K consistent. Well, hundred K consistent, then one fifty K consistent. Yeah. And then once we're at 200 K that's it. Take over the universe. Yeah. Um, okay. There's a very important housekeeping. Uh, I've kind of noticed this. I have like a running tally in life. I don't know if you guys have played this game before, but the owning sunglasses, Yeah. you have like a running tally where you either, you you lose them or you find them. And this counts for anything better than Ray-Bans. Ray-Bans are better. Yeah, 100 bucks and up. Right? 100 bucks and up. It's like, what's your guys' sunglass score? My personally is one to one. I lost a pair of parasols at the, at the beach one time. Yeah. And I found a pair of Ray-Bans, I think, on a bus one time. Yep. So I'm one and one. That's my sunglass score. What's your sunglass score? I'm probably like negative three. I gotta say, you just like, lose. I don't. Yeah, I don't have any memories of uh, of finding any, but I do have some sunglasses that are missing from my life. So I'll ballpark it at three. three negative three. Yeah. So someone out there is plus three, feasting on my discarded <laughs> sunglasses. <laughs> All right. Let us know your sunglass score in the comments. I'm I'm one and one. I've lost a pair. I found a pair. And that's pretty nice balance. Yeah, the beach is where it happens. Wave hits, you get a little cocky, boom, gone. Never yeah, finding it again. Exactly. All right, moving on. Speaking of Persols at the beach, we have some new Rob Smith shit. Mm. Um, yeah, obviously, uh, as everyone knows, Rob and his buddy uh, played tennis, got ceviche after at the cabana. It's been commemorated in many different ways. Ceviche with the buddy after tennis. Oh, that's the... Uh, the poster. Yep. Got that framed. It's very important. It's art. Here's the original clip, just so everyone knows it. Yesterday after tennis, me and my buddy had ceviche. Yesterday after tennis, me and my buddy had ceviche. So this is like my favorite thing. Obviously, not everyone understands why. Bunch of people have been sending in videos and things that explain the ceviche tennis stuff. First, look at this. A vinyl sticker. On someone's car, tennis ceviche cabanas with a picture of Rob and a tennis it's racket. It's like a Rob negative. It's perfect. Perfect. And then someone made a Lego scene of it. Yeah, this is Rob in a suit under a, an umbrella which is a with cabana. a tennis racket, basically a cabana. And I think that counts as ceviche over there. Yeah, a Lego scene. And then someone on a mountain was screaming about it. Hey, did you hear about, uh, did you hear about Rob Smith? He got back from... Miami from playing tennis, and he went to go get some ceviches, get the cabana. Did you hear about that? Uh, so that's great. Did you hear about that at the end? Uh, but then there was a child talking about it. Hey, Daddy, did you know that uh, Rob Smith and his buddy had ceviche after tennis in Miami? Did he? Yeah. Rob's a man. <laughs> He really is. Yeah, I know he is. <laughs> well, it's great. And then I love using kids as props towards a greater goal. So yeah. that, that that video made me very happy. And then last but not least, uh, it was on it was on uh, Wikipedia. Yeah. So Wikipedia ceviche page. What's the bottom say? It was on the Wikipedia ceviche page for maybe 15 minutes. Um, but it said perhaps the most important part of the history of ceviche is that Rob Smith reportedly ate it after tennis with his buddy in 2023. <laughs> So, guys, this is getting good. I thought this was going to be done like last week or two I, weeks I ago. I know. It, it trickles in. It's like there's a there's a yeah. wave after wave, you know? And it's like the best thing in the world for me. My favorite thing is like these weird inside jokes. And then when I receive these, huge squirts for me. Yeah. Um, so best week of my life. <laughs> Thank you all for that. Uh, obviously, a question on most people's mind, is Rob going to replace Tucker? That's what I thought. As soon as Tucker news broke, I go, Rob. 
especially being we're living in like a Truman Show type thing. Mm -hmm. It's like who's they who are they going to put on primetime 8 p.m. Eastern in the world where I watch 8 p.m. Eastern every day? It's going to be like one of the main people. It's going to be Rob. Yeah. Fleckers so. watch Tucker every day. Yeah. Including Fridays. Yeah. Which is crazy, right? Like yeah. eight o'clock on a Friday. He's sitting down to Tucker. Yeah. It's like usually you kind of kick back. You're done. Yeah. Uh, so that was a big blow for you, huh? It was a big blow. It's sad. It's There's good and bad. The good is we would watch Tucker during the week and be like, oh, we're talking about that on the show on Friday. Yeah. Tucker got to it first. So there's never going to be a Tucker got to it first thing. And then the other good stuff is going to be the subscription model future. Like the the dying uh, the dying media is the mainstream cable news. Whatever's on this channel at this time that someone yeah, programmed for exactly. Me. Like so, Tucker. It's like Tucker's great. Everyone watched Tucker. Even Jesse Waters was pretty good, but mostly people watched the last seven minutes of Jesse Waters because Tucker was on next. Yeah, and it's like now everyone's going to be disenfranchised, no longer needing to go to Fox for anything. So it's going to catalyze the drive from people from cable news to subscription base. So instead of paying a hundred bucks a month for cable, people will probably pay 10 bucks a month across 10 creators who they like. And then that's going to be the new model going forward. So it's a little bit early, but the game is heading in that way where instead of paying for cable, we're just going to be paying for subscriptions for the people that you like. Yeah. Um, and do you do, we may have talked, talked about this on bonus land or something, but, uh, YouTube TV is just uh -huh. like seventy eight ninety nine or something now. Oh, is it? It's like just you became cable. Yeah. Like it's the same thing. And all these megacorps are like, you know, increasing their things, their pricing. And it's just like it's becoming overload. So, yeah. I mean, we'll see how it shakes out eventually. But yeah, I agree. It's getting um, crazy. Can I say something? And if you don't like it, we can cut it out. Sure. Richard Rapway watches Hannity every night. <laughs> <laughs> Every time, so Fleckus obviously watches Tucker, and then like for a while there, we're usually chilling. It's like at night, and uh, I'll I'll just be yelling to him. I'll be like, "You're watching Hannity!" Like as soon as the channel turns, mm -hmm. and then I'll yell if if it gets to Hannity, and then a commercial, I'll be like, "You're watching Hannity's commercials!" Yeah, <laughs> and just to shame him because just to get me off. It's bad. So all right, let's move on. Are you ready to move on? Yeah. Um. Okay. Let's move on. We said Rob was going to replace Tucker, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. You got that. Yeah. In the books. Because if that happens, I'll watch eight o'clock every night on Fox News. I will watch every single episode. Um, all right. <laughs> Michelle Obama. Yeah. She's been in the news lately. She's doing a book tour, uh -oh. a.k.a. a mini a mini tour, a little mini presidential tour. Yeah. Where's uh, the book tour? Wisconsin, Pennsylvania? Yeah. Iowa? <laughs> Come exactly. on, Michelle. So I think she's still going to run. We've been saying that in the show for a while. Yeah. Um, and obviously there's that conspiracy theory that Michelle Obama is a man, right? Yeah, that terrible conspiracy theory that is totally unproven. Yeah, it is. Uh, whatever. Yeah, it's a conspiracy theory. <laughs> I mean, come on. Um, esoteric lifter memes. Yeah. An account we follow. Yes. He posted Michelle Obama's uh, yearbook photo from when she was like in eighth grade, probably. Yeah. And it looked pretty real. So then in my head, I was thinking like, why with the Obamas, if they knew Michelle is actually a woman, why wouldn't they just go, here's her graduation pick. You guys are all crazy. And my theory is because they let that conspiracy go, even though they know they have the ace in the hole, which is her yearbook photo mm -hmm. and they don't release it. They let that conspiracy go just so all other conspiracies that surround the Obamas can be thrown out as well. Ooh. So it's like, say, you know, oh, Michelle Obama's a man and Barack Obama was was not born in America. He's not an American. And then it's like, well, if Michelle Obama isn't a man, you can go, oh, here's a picture of her in eighth grade. All these conspiracies are all BS. Throw them all out. So it's almost like you allow a conspiracy to get out of hand and go crazy. And even though if it's impossible, just so the other conspiracies can get thrown out as well. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, it's advanced level PR. Where And then like when the good conspiracy that like actually is on the money comes out and people are talking about that, boom, they drop the Michelle Obama in eighth grade. Exactly. So then it's like, oh, you guys are conspiracy theories. You think Obama's born in a different country and Michelle Obama's a man. Here's her in eighth grade. But I'll go as far as saying, remember that time Michelle Obama did the dance on Ellen and her Yeah, yeah, yeah. The elephant trunk. The elephant trunk came flapping. I think that could have been a fake penis. They wanted that to happen. Yes. Okay. A fake penis... That was probably at the time when the other conspiracy theory was kind of getting close to getting called out and mm -hmm. caught. So they're like, we need something. 
and she did a dance with a swinging whatever in her pants, yep. a fake penis, and that was like the biggest psyop ever. Everyone got attached to that clip. What's going on here? Oh, you crazy conspiracy people. Yeah. And they're hiding the pregnancy p- pictures on yeah, purpose. I'm like, sure there are pictures of yeah. her pregnant. Yeah. Or the graduation yearbook photo was AI generated and we're back on, baby. Yeah. <laughs> it's like conspiracy within a conspiracy. Either way, there is one. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, exactly. you know, we'll see. So just keep that in mind. Don't commit too hard to certain conspiracies, especially if we don't have the ace in the hole. And I mean, Joe Biden, Joe Biden announced his reelection this week. So, uh, yeah, that's on. So any challengers yeah. coming, Michelle might be a late bloomer. But they also kind of said that they're not going to do any primary debates for Joe Biden. Yeah. So they like the uh, John Fetterman. They beta tested running a mentally ill person, a yes. mentally disabled person. <laughs> well, and they beta tested it with Joe, too. He was in terrible shape when he was doing the they already canceled one debate against Trump. Remember? Yep. Um, so 2020, I remember thinking Joe Biden is too mentally incapacitated to run of course that was four years ago i know he's 80 he's 80 now or whatever so it's like i think they're gonna say oh joe biden's the guy joe biden's the guy no debates no debates and then joe biden's gonna be too old and either joe biden's gonna say i'm gonna be vp michelle obama's gonna be president or just it's time to take a step back michelle obama's gonna be the candidate and they're gonna run her they're gonna do great they're gonna let Derek chauvin off the world's going to go crazy. She's going to be the voice of reason to unite everyone because of racism. And then, I don't know. Bro, and here's my my take on this. I know you've been harping on this. I just don't, I think Michelle Obama's kind of selfish. I don't think she gives a fuck about yeah. America. I don't think she wants the responsibility. She has a great life where Secret Service protects her on Martha's Vineyard. And she gets a $4 million check every time she decides to write a book again. Becoming Michelle Obama. Mm. I married Barack. Yeah, I see. So, that. Hey, I see. So, that. Uh, so I'm, I'm the, uh, I'm taking the other side just for the sake of podcast debate. Yeah, you know, that, there, uh, that's fair. There is a situation where remember Obama said if there was like a way I can have a puppet in charge and run a <laughs> secret cabal government, I would do it. Yeah, yeah. So Obama ran two terms. Then he has Joe Biden's term, and then he can get two out of Michelle. That's King Obama. Yeah, that's puppet master shit. So it's like there is Ruining a way for America. him to have his vision realized where he becomes the the king of America. Um, All right. Fourth term Obama. Yeah. Okay. You know what I realized? What else? the last piece of housekeeping. Okay. What? You know how Dylan Mulvaney gets all the corporate deals? Yes. And you know how every kid wants to be a TikTok influencer? Yes. Dylan Mulvaney is making it very clear that there's a career path for weird social media gays. For twink gay stuff. If you're in that little LGBT world at all or even thinking about it, oh, Bud Light deal, Maybelline, all this Nike that's the career path. And Go it's for like, it. It completely encourages people to pursue their dreams and lean into that weird gay shit that actually isn't meritocracy based. Mm-hmm. It's just token. It's tokenism, right? Exactly. Um, and if you go on TikTok and if you scroll on TikTok, you will see advertisements that like every gay creator gets an advertisement. Mm. Like those. You remember we showed those old gay four gay men. Oh yeah. They're, they're, they're like selling cell phones or something. You get Dylan on there. Uh, and, Multiple people who we've had in cringe of the week, I've seen on ads on TikTok. Yeah. So it's dark out there, guys. That's great for them. Yeah. Um, All right. Moving on. We're out of housekeeping. We're coming into cringe. Before we get into cringe, guys, this is the last week my hair is going to look like this. People have been calling for a haircut. Yeah. It's not good. I know. It's too much hair. I get it. It looks like crap. Shorter beard, I guess, is a little bit better. On top, it's too much. I'm going to buzz it. I'm going to trim it. Next week, I'll be looking good. Personally, I say, who cares? Yeah, you, that's you, what you I get, said. You get a week to week. Like, you, you know where he's headed, and one day it'll be cut, you know? Don't worry about it, guys. Yeah. But if it, if it tickles the post, it tickles the post. Leave it alone. Yeah, let me know what you guys think. I'm always up for more comments, and I reply. Within the first, like, three hours of the show, I reply to pretty much every comment. So get involved in that. All right, cringe of the week. This week's Cringe of the Week is brought to you by... What do you want to bring up? By? Bring up by? Richard Rapoy on Instagram. Yeah. Follow, follow Richard Rapoy. He's got over 100 and what thousand followers? 125, 126. You guys watch the show. You like us. You like Richard Rapoy. Make sure you give him a follow on Instagram and tickle his posts. And when you see his posts on Instagram, his memes, his funny, funny homemade memes, right? Tickle, tickle. There you go. There you go. Brought to you by Richard Rapoy. All right. First, Down Syndrome Barbie. This is your. This is, this is what you uh, represented. Brought to you by Richard Rapoy. Yeah. So you want to go ahead? Down no, syndrome. Down, there's a Down syndrome Barbie now. Mm-hmm. 
Um, this is the first Barbie doll representing a person with Down syndrome. Yeah. Um, is that Mattel. good or bad? Is that good or bad? You know, personally, I don't care that much, but I have a problem with the execution. I I can agree. I have some notes. What are your notes? And then maybe I'll tell you if ours um, are the same. Things could have been done a little differently to have been more realistic. Things could have been more realistic. I don't think the doll is retarded enough. It doesn't look like a Down syndrome person at all. I think it's like a whitewashed version of a Down syndrome yeah. person. It's like that looks pretty normal to me. I don't know. That doesn't look yeah. like the defining features that they have. Yeah, so. which is interesting. And this comes from the line of Barbies, the fashionista line of Barbies, where you have the trans shirt Barbie, the metal leg Barbie. Wheelchair. Smoke chair, yeah, smoke show in a wheelchair Barbie. Looks like some sort of lesbian Barbie. Um, and so my main point was like, you know, I, I don't want to speak for kids with Down syndrome. I don't really know, you know. Yeah. But when I was a kid and I was playing with toys and doing this, I was Batman. I was a super soldier. I was G.I. Joe. You're taking yourself from here to here. I was a better version of myself. Smart. So why would anybody want to play with the doll? I don't know. That that was my initial thought. Not being mean. Not you know, being mean. Some people are saying this is good because it's a pro-life message. You know, it's like, you know. Better than aborting it. So down, you know, here's Down syndrome Barbie. And it's a blank screen because they got an abortion. They zapped it because eugenics are chill. Um, yeah. And so. That's a good point. I mean, that's that's the only other point that I've seen uh, talking wise, but they didn't execute it right. And when I'm playing with things and I'm a little kid, I want to reach for the stars, not be a Down limited, syndrome. Not limited. Not be a specially able Down syndrome Barbie. That's just me. That's just you. This section was brought to you by Richard Rapoy on Instagram. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, kid plays video games, um, yeah, this and, is... and his mom helps him. How I keep my game of sun hydrated. So my son's so fussy and doesn't like the taste of plain water, we found another solution, water cooler and prime. Prime's really hard to come by in Australia, so with the help of the retail correction, we've got a huge supply, and he is loving it. With the school holidays, he doesn't even have to go out of his room to get a drink. School holiday fun. Mm, that's good. Uh, he doesn't like the taste of plain water. <laughs> He's going to go far in yeah. this world. And like fill up a, a thing of with Prime. Yeah. Growing up, my dad. Is, is Prime sugar? Is, is Prime sugar water? I don't know. It might, it might be a. A water version of it. Okay. If he's just drinking straight sugar water, that'd be crazy. That's what I'm saying. I think it's like, I think it has to be some sort of sugar. Uh, they have sugar free, whatever. I'm not getting into so, it. No yeah, free ads. No for free ads for PRIME. Um, but growing up, my dad would make fun of me whenever I played video games. Like one time he walked in, I was playing Star Fox. And then one of the people on Star Fox, his name was Slippy. And the Slippy like died in like a plane crash in the video game. And the game was like, Slippy, no. So then every single time my dad saw me playing video games, he goes, Slippy, and like kind of make fun of me with his voice. And then like he'd come around and I'd be embarrassed to get caught playing video games in front of him because I truly knew how much of a waste of time it was. Mm. And then over time, I just like played less and less and would go outside just because it wasn't worth it. Like I knew it was like stupid to play video games. Uh, yeah, that's I, I'd say that's and good like parenting. He made fun of me a little bit. It wasn't like cruel. It, it was like, like oh, Slippy, yeah. get in your room. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was like, oh, hey, Slippy, like, how's it going today? And I'd be like, uh. Oh, yeah, you caught me playing that gay game. <laughs> so, and then I would stop playing and it worked. And that's good. That's called good parenting. Yeah. And this mom is taking the opposite approach called enabling. Well, yeah, uh, where she streamlines the kid so he doesn't have to leave the chair. Mm. So you have all these screens and you don't leave the chair. It's yeah. like. I was playing outside way more. So I saw um, video games, and it's just like we play video games from time to time. Uh, it's just kind of like a time passer thing. But it's like you shouldn't make that your whole life. And, like, you can't play video games for eight hours, you know? Um, mm. And I saw something like the video game industry is worth $50 billion a year. And, like, the movies, going to the movies is, like, $10 billion a year. Wow. Uh, and ignore those numbers, but it was, like, some huge multiple. And so, like... It's a become a cash cow. I think a lot more people are addicted to video games than, mm. you know, uh, people let on. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, it's something to watch. And, and it gives you, you squirts. It gives you something to do. If you're like a young man, 
you feel like you accomplished something. You went to the next level. You accomplished the mission. You saved the person. You shot the guy. Yeah. And it gives you little squirts that your brain naturally desires that you would maybe find elsewhere in life if you weren't in your room. Exactly. So that's you know, the big problem. Don't let the kids spend too much time. It, it feels like such a waste. That kid is a young white Australian kid who's like should be like out looking for chunks of gold and yeah. wrestling gators and doing other and resisting very- the vaccine. Exactly. <laughs> but he's he's playing video games in the cool setup with the ring light, you know? Yeah. So, doesn't leave know. his room. Not good. Uh, next is the mom with the unmotivated son. Yeah. Let's see what her solution is for a guy like this. Oh my God, you guys, what is going on with 18 to 25 year old young men? I have talked to more moms this week about their sons who are either smoking pot and, or don't have a job failed out of school, have no purpose or direction in life, and the parents are absolutely beside themselves. Not only that, but on the group call Tuesday night with the Empowered Moms group, there were five moms on the call with the same set of circumstances. Are you experiencing this as a parent? That's interesting. Yeah. Kids are unmotivated. The boys are unmotivated. Growing up, and use my own life as an example, a good way to get a kid motivated is to sign them up for wrestling. Because mm-hmm. the when you face someone across from you who's about the same size as you, and the choice is either to pin them or get pinned yourself, that does something good for the young brain. I think so too. That gets your young brain going. Where you get into a mode where you're like, I don't want to get pinned by this guy. I need to pin him first. And then it's like if you get pinned and humiliated really bad, then it's like that can never happen again. It's a little sink or swim type baptism yeah. by fire competition so, wrestling. That's a good way to fix that. Yeah, and I just think it's so weird that, like, not weird. Obviously, these moms care, and they're trying to help, but it's like this woman's group trying to address the issues of young men, and it's like, you guys are going to just be guessing, you know? (laughs) You guys are just making your best guess, and why does Johnny smoke pot, and he just plays video games? It's like, where's his dad? Where's his phone? Is he being punished? Is he being proactively, like, managed? Because sometimes, you know, to break through that, you have to be managed, almost intimidated, You have to be like, you know, stern, extremely stern, but fair, you know? So uh, my my parents growing up, they threatened me all the time when I was misbehaving. Oh, me too. You know what we're legally obligated to give you? A bed, three meals, and a blanket, you know, like one Mm -hmm. pair of clothes. They'd say shit like that all the time. And it's like, that's what you need. You need stern stuff. And I didn't fear my mom. You know what I mean? Like I didn't fear mom. It was wait until your dad gets home type shit. Yeah, it um, wasn't, oh, I filled the five-gallon jug up with Prime for you. I'll put it right next to your computer console. Exactly. <laughs> and then I think these women are probably like, they're a little bit shocked. They're like, uh, the moms, I, I'm, I'm making an assumption here, but it's like, no, Johnny's feelings, you need to worry, like to the husband, you need to worry about Johnny's feelings. You're being a little too mean to Johnny. You're, uh, mm, no, Johnny's not doing those harsh penalties and stuff like that. And then, gee, what's wrong with Johnny to the other women? You yeah. know what I mean? Like You're not set the rules the, yeah. and then turn to the other and be like, well, exactly. what's going on with the men? And it's like men need strong men. And it's a chain migration type thing going on there. Yeah. Where strong men create other strong men and uh, you don't let bullshit happen on a strong man's watch. So and that's so much of it. And it's like my dad was a strong man. The football coaches I had were strong men. The guys at the gym where I would work out for football were all strong men. Yeah. And you learn from all of them. Maybe if your dad's not going to tell you a lot about girls, the the guy at the gym will tell you about girls. Maybe if, you know, like every, like whatever you're missing, you get filled in by somewhere else. And a lot of parents go like, oh, geez, like the world changed, like especially this generation right now. The world changed drastically since when they were a kid versus when their kid's a kid. So they think it's like, oh, you know, they all play video games. They're all chatting on Discord all the time. They're all doing this. And it's like you need to kind of set some boundaries and standards and be like, your screen time is this. You're going crazy with screen time. Why don't you ride your bike? Why don't you get outside? Yeah. You know, that's for the Mm younger-ish crowd. But a lot of that, uh, like, strong raising your children gets lost between that generational gap. You you know what I'm saying? They, 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 like, don't know how to raise the next generation with this new stuff. Exactly. And so the principles are still the same. Be tough. Have personal responsibility. Have honor and pride. Um, You know, care about your reputation and don't just be a little uh, user. You know, there, there's kind of like a user versus doer thing that yeah. happens. And it's like you're if you're just using, oh, I'm using this video game. I'm using this TV show. I use Netflix versus like creating and doing. A doer is like I worked out and I became t- uh, the top ranked wrestler in the conference. Yeah. You know, I made the football team. I started as a sophomore, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. So, I mean, 
that was big in my house. There's always competition. It was always like me versus the rest of the kids in my grade. My parents always told me, like, we're a football family. I have two brothers that played football. My dad played football. We all played football. And I remember one time I was like, hey, dad, if I don't play football, what would, what, what, what would you say? And he's like, oh, that'd be fine. You have to be the number one student in the class, though. Exactly. And exactly. I was like, I don't want to do that. There's competition. <laughs> and, and, and that's an important thing. That was growing up in my family, too. And our parents raised us pretty similar based mm-hmm. on what I have heard and know. Um, it, we were always in competition with some other kid who played basketball, who like, you know, the kid who was from across town that you'd play in basketball every year, you'd try to compete with him. You try to compete with, you know, the football players, mm-hmm. like you need to have someone who you hate. Yeah. You need to have a rival. You need to have something that drives you. Um, and then video games is like, Oh, whatever. I don't know. Me and my friends just talk and hang out. There's no real competition. There's no real uh, stuff and the women are like, geez, why are they just smoking weed? It's like you gotta. Do <laughs> and they're probably like watching porn on their phones. Of course, and, yeah. You so. gotta do high T shit to have a high T son. You know, yeah, so exactly. We uh, used to have competition within my own family. My mom was very strict too. She used to say, "You're gonna play football. You can go to Duke, Stanford, or the Ivy League, or you're not gonna go to college." And then my brother and sister went to Princeton and Stanford. Mm-hmm. And then I was in like eighth grade and they're like, you're going to be the loser of the family. <laughs> you're not going to, you're going to put the sticker on the back of the car. That's going to embarrass us. Exactly. Stuff like that. Exactly. And that got my ass into shape and I figured it out. I went to Dartmouth. My little brother went to Princeton. We all followed the rules. Yeah. Four for four. Four for four. My mom should write a book. Um, all right. Let's tiger move on. mom. The white version. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> white tiger mom. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And then also important. It's like the, a child needs a mentor or a coach that they look up to. Yep. Someone that they're afraid of, parents. Their dad. Um, and then also like someone that is their competition, their enemy. An enemy slash rival. I think you have all those pieces and then you'll have a motivated kid who actually wants to accomplish something. Yeah. So. And the kid, you should just tell your kids from day one that they should be the best at everything they do. And anything less than the best is not really, you're not excited about it. So you try, oh, yeah. you know. Extremely high standards. And then you aim for the clouds. And then you fall, or you aim for the stars, and then you fall to the clouds, and that's still pretty good, right? Some some stupid shit, like some that. Waldo Emerson quote. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's go to the next one. We're still in. We're we're in our non-trans cringe. Yeah. Next is the trans cringe. Yeah. Um, the girl who gets interviewed, the co- the the little person. What is the ideal height in a guy? Six three. Six three. No Every way. Single one. You you know one of the guys I hooked up with. You know multiple guys of the... Uh, but 6'3"? Yeah. That's good. Ain't no way. That, just that energy from that girl is like, that's like the, that's my least favorite kind of girl energy. You know who I fuck. You know the guys I got, I got racked by. Yeah. You know the people who use me You know me multiple up. guys. Yeah. And it's like, nice. It's like, you're just acting like a man, a real, real lady, like... Honor your father. Yeah. You're Honor on Honor your father. Very disgusting. You're on the internet. You're on the internet. And also, um... You know, there's there's this sort of thing that happens with college girls where it's like, you know who I, you know the notches on my belt. And it's like, nobody cares the notches on your belt. You know how easy it is to get laid as a girl yeah. in college? You know how many horny 20-somethings are around waiting just for the chance to have... For and, anyone. And then also to be like, dude, I fucked a midget. You know, <laughs> like it's kind of like a meme uh, Olympic thing. Um, and... You know, I think you should be counting how many, you know, the guys I hooked up with, how many parents have you met? How yeah. many, how many, how many brought you home? How many Thanksgivings have you been brought to? So, you know, bad, bad system here. Getting Very perpetuated. Bad. That so. energy is just, that's not a nice girl. Shame, shame, shame. Yep. You know, the guys I've hooked up with like, oh, wow. Look what, at they're you. all six, three. Look yeah. at you. Lucky husband. One day I'm sure is going to wife you up for the record. I am six, three. Just yeah. anecdotal side evidence. Annual reminder, Rap Boy 6'3", I'm 6'1". Just getting that out there. All right. I think you've shrunk, though, right? Haven't you been compressing? Because of the weight? <laughs> <laughs> you get sucked closer to the all earth. Right, I'm getting right, sucked right. down. Uh, <laughs> we had a uh, one of our No Jumper fake headlines was going to be, uh, Rap Boy out at Fleckus Talks a Podcast. Fleckus, too fat to fit two people in frame. <laughs> but you guys would have thought it was too mean if Rap Boy said it, even though I thought it. Yep. All right. We're into, let's get into the trans cringe. Yeah. Trans cringe page one. There's plenty. The dead name crying girl. Yeah, let's go. This girl's uh, a menace. Imagine being trans and trying to go get your medication. I literally walk up there, the, la- the lady on the phone 
She's like, oh, can I have your last name? And so I give it to her. She's like, oh, okay, I'll meet you out there and I'll give you your prescription, right? So I'm waiting and she comes out and then she says, oh, is this for And then she says my dead name. And I'm like, my name is Rylan. And she just looks at me. And then she puts the medication on the table and shuts the door and locks it behind her. So, that's the voice you would use if your whole family got murdered. Yeah. That's like the voice you would use if you're like, yes, officer, he was about 5'10", he hit me with the bat, and then he ran yeah. that way. <laughs> that's the voice you use describing how your uh, platoon member lost a leg in Afghanistan. Yeah. That's that's the voice. I don't even think Batman used that voice after his parents got killed in front of him. Yeah, he just went to work. He just went straight up to training mode. <laughs> Remember Black Hawk Down? Mm -hmm. You're crying because someone called you your name? What happened? <laughs> what happened? Yeah, so this isn't like the, the most horrific things ever describable. Yeah. Uh, and you can use this voice, maybe. Yeah, um, exactly. But instead, someone still gave you your medication and didn't really engage with your stupid game. Exactly. And for someone trying to reinvent themselves, you're really making it an ugly world. You know what I mean? 100%. Like if that were me and I'd be like, all right, I'm trans now. I don't care what anyone says. I'm trans. I'm Rylan. Oh, went to the place and they said, oh, my dead name. Water off my back. Hey, it's actually Rylan now. Can you update the paperwork? Thanks. <laughs> it's a perfect day. And I go down the street yeah. and perfect day plays in my head. And I'm Rylan now and I'm feeling good. And I'm like, oh, no, no. I'm a girl. It's water off my back. Nothing's going to stop me. I'm Ryland. Wouldn't that be the mindset if you're trying to reinvent yourself and be a positive person? A hundred percent. But it's like you can't because victimhood is the currency here. So you have to, and then you also need validation from people that don't agree with you for some reason in this weird religion. So it's like, you can't just be positive and go, I'm Ryland. I don't care what anyone says. If you call me my fake name, that's your problem. My name is Ryland. Instead, it's like any sort of kickback, any sort of you know, dead naming, whatever they yeah. call it, is like reasonable to be sad. It's, it's an a, assault. Mm -hmm. And it's like, in reality, you could have just been a positive person and that would have made more sense, but that's not how these people operate. Yeah. They oh, no biggie. They, oh, no biggie. They didn't know. That yeah. lady didn't know. And so I told her, and I'm off to McDonald's now. Yeah. To weep in my French fries. But, you know. Yep. So it's weird. They need the validation from people that don't agree with them. And that's how you know it's a setup. They're set up to be in conflict with everybody else. And that's how you can tell they're pawns. 100%. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the kid who died from them trying to make a vagina out of a colon for them. Yeah, this was a um, something that just came out recently, but I think this happened a couple years ago. And but it uh, just came out. It just came out because a lot of times these freak medical incidents, and th that's something we want to impress on everybody. You know how we're in a big experiment right now with this transgender stuff, uh, which I have I have no part of. I'm out. Um, stuff happens like medical papers get published a year and a half after someone died. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or or something like that. So this was a trans teen who died from vaginoplasty uh, complications during landmark Dutch study used to justify child sex changes. Major complications began within just uh, 24 hours after the surgery, right? Yeah. They got something called necrotizing fasciitis, which is like you basically rot it out. R rotting time. Yeah. Um, so... Let's explain the situation, too, here, because there's a couple little facts that make this insane, even more insane than it actually is, right? Um, the identified male whose puberty was blocked by the Dutch researchers at a very early stage uh, meant that there wasn't enough penile tissue for surgeons to use to create a female vagina or a neo-vagina. And so that's what they do. They use your penis. They invert it. They use the skin. They try to give you some sort of, uh, what do they call it, rot pocket? Rot pocket. Yeah. They call it neo-vagina in the paper. We call it rot pocket. Smells. Uh, smells. It's stinky. Uh, so therefore, so there wasn't enough penile tissue due to the uh, hormone suppressants, right? So they used a more risky procedure using a section of the patient's bowel, which resulted in fatal necrotizing fasciitis. So not enough dick to flip you? Let's use your butthole. Yeah. So imagine if you like were, imagine if someone from the past came and saw this surgery and like, well, doctor, what are you doing? And it's like, oh, I'm cutting out this teenager's ass and I'm going to chop his dick off and then make a neo vagina. 
It's like you go to jail for that. Yeah. It's how like a Frankenstein? How is is Doctor Mengele on board? You know, <laughs> this like, is like a Frankenstein situation. Exactly. And so the patient is des- uh, described as a healthy eighteen year old. Uh, blah blah blah. This is saying transgender women with early onset gender dysphoria report fewer behavioral problems. So that was their justification for the procedure that ended up killing him. Um, major complications began within 24 hours of surgery and uh, necrotizing fasciitis was confirmed in the days that followed. Despite large doses of intravenous antibiotics and repeated surgical debridement, debridement, mm. I'm not sure what that word is, uh, They previous the previously healthy patient went into multiple organ failure and died. So they were watching him very closely. That's a tough way to go. Yeah, not my favorite. Wouldn't be my choice. Sounds like, like a, a, a torture. You cut your dick off and put your ass your asshole in your front, and then you rot out. Uh, and last final piece, it says, the young person's death revealed that the deadly strain of E. coli most, most likely came from the patient's own intestines, not from the hospital setting. So, so it was never going to work. You used the butt, you used someone's butthole, and you had E. coli in there, and you tried to make it into a vagina. In these situations, they could either use the butt, stomach lining, or the inside of your mouth lining. Those Disgusting. are the options. And like this is this is medical progress. Yeah. And um, you know you know what the penis comes from. Penis yeah. comes from the forearm, the old the Mickey arm. Mouse glove. Yeah. As we called it on the show. Um Mimetic Sisyphus had a great tweet about this. Um basically people who defend the trans surgeries say that like this is the same as when people used to be right handed automatically because they thought that was correct. And then once people realized some people were left handed, the number of left handed people exponentially increased. Which is actually fascinating too, right? It's interesting like, for that. Like that's a true situation with right versus left handedness. Like but, in the early 1900s, people were just like, no, we're all righties. Why are you right with your left hand? See, right with your, <laughs> use your right hand. Everybody does it. And uh, like they were suppressing lefties, right? But then the trans activists come out and use this graph uh, to justify these trans surgeries. And he says, what, do we have to pull out the graph every single time? Don't make me tap the sign. The left-handed graph is the same as cutting off your balls and vagina and stuff. <laughs> And then Mimetic Sisyphus had a great point on top of that. An account we've been following, you guys should follow too. He's linked in the description. Yeah. He, he's like makes the best points and a friend of the show. Yeah, we want to make him bigger on Twitter. So if yeah. you follow him. Um, and it said, it took eight years to increase left-handedness by 120% as seen by the chart we just showed you. Eight decades. Eight decades. In the last five years, top surgery has increased 390%. Your graph is bad and you should feel bad. Yeah, so not the same thing. It's not even close. <laughs> like, oh, dude. So that's like a big myth in the, well, we believe it's a myth in the transgender community. It's like all these trans people have existed forever and they've just been suppressed into not living their true lives instead of this infectious, contagion social media thing that it yeah. that we believe it is, obviously. Exactly. Um, and there's so. also this like response to like on the right, there's some uh, right wing people who are like, we need Caitlyn Jenner to come out against this. Like, we need like a rational trans person to to come out against this crazy stuff against the kids. The myth of the rational trans. Rational trans person. It's like, oh yeah, my designated driver, he'll he'll be out in a sec. He's just getting a couple more Jaeger Jaeger, <laughs> Jaeger bombs. <laughs> Exactly. Let, him, let him finish his Jaeger bomb and he'll drive us home. Exactly. And so we we were talking about this because Caitlyn Jenner uh, has been anti Dylan Mulvaney, mm. which is like, no, I'm okay. I'm Caitlyn on the cover of Esquire or whatever magazine that was. Yeah. But Dylan's a little out of hand. Yeah. Rational trans person, guy who thinks they're a girl, cut their dick off. Yeah. Rational, one of those. Rash- <laughs> I'm, I'm the <laughs> rational version of that. Um, should I read this? Uh, very much, or I think we got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold there on. ain't no such thing as a rational trans person. Oh, and then Caitlyn Jenner had a, a quote to the New York Post that said, I am glad, Caitlyn. Hilarious. I am glad the position I am at today. I am glad the position I am at today that I can be a voice of reason about what is going on out there. Yeah. So reasonable. Rational trans person. Caitlyn. <laughs> That's Caitlyn. So. Um, okay, really quick. You know the guys who get the surgery to lengthen their legs? Yes. Is that gender affirming surgery too? I think so. I think it's not, or masculine affirming. Like yeah. I, I, I'm not five, six. I'm a five, nine guy. I'm a five, nine guy. I def- identify as five, nine. I just thought of that. Cause I was looking at these pictures and these like videos of this guy, like le- lengthening his legs. Yeah. Here's this guy in the background, 190 centimeters. I'm coming. And he's using this, like m- the metal thing that is attached to the inside of his legs. He increases them like a micro a millimeter every day uh, and he goes I'm coming so you and I saw someone on Twitter describe it as nuking your skeletal frame for a few 
extra inches to attract a woman. It's all for women, right? Like, yeah. But just nuking your skeletal structure and frame. And it's like, imagine getting like, uh, uh, you're watching a football game and a play comes. Yeah. And it sweeps your legs. It's like they're bending backwards. Yeah. Your skeletal structure is not secure. No structural integrity after that. So, How tall would you make yourself if you had to get that surgery? If I had to get the surgery? Well, if you're going to get it, what would, you, what would your goal height be if you're 6'3"? Six, 6'5". Six, five. Six, five. I wouldn't want to go too tall, but 6'5 is like a nice powerful number. 6'5 six, six, is six, three is good. 6'3 is perfect, you know, but 6'5, you're at a different level. Yeah, and then you're, like 6'8, and then you become like, my heart can't do it. Yeah, 6'8 is freak, die early, uh, tough. Andre the Giant shit. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, the Bizarro World pick. All the men are little and all the women are men. My favorite pick of the week. This is from some sort of gender <laughs> clinic. It's, a, it's some, some sort of transgender clinic, and then you look at the women, and they're gigantic, and you look at all the little men, and they're all little boys. <laughs> What's going on there? Oh, uh, Willy Wonka shit. That's the future. That's like, I don't know if you guys have ever seen, um, what's the one? Being John Malkovich? Yeah, yeah, Where yeah. Where you go into the wrong universe for a second, and it's like you get into this backwards <laughs> universe where all the men are little boys and all the women are gigantic. Yes. That's an alternate universe. All boys look little and all the ladies big. And all gigantic ladies. <laughs> all right, let's move on. Uh, transphobia is white supremacy. You know, one of the reasons why cis people think they're real or natural or the default is because they've fallen into the trap of the myth of white supremacy. Yup, they're connected. So if you think things like trans women aren't women, or if you call people trans but then refuse to call yourself cis if you're cis, that means that you have been influenced by one of the original influencers. The siblings, the twin siblings of colonialism and the myth of white supremacy. And those twin influencer siblings get paid by capitalism to influence. They have literally influenced you to believe that there is a version of a man and a woman that is more human than all the other versions. Sound familiar? Yep. White dominant culture, colonialism, capitalism, they've been working real hard on us. Remember, just like with any influencer trend that is toxic, we don't have to believe it and we don't have to follow it. And in fact, we can even point out the ludicrousness. Play the end, the very end, just like any, what'd you say? Just like any influencer thing, you don't have to believe it or follow it. Remember, just like with any influencer trend that is toxic, we don't have to believe it and we don't have to follow it. And in fact, we can even point out the ludicrousness and make it completely obsolete. You're close. So, <laughs> so we're on the right track. You have the whole thing backwards, but you're very close. She just described our whole show. Yeah. Pointing out the ludicrousness and laughing at it. It's toxic. It. You don't have to, exactly. You have to, it's toxic. You don't have to acknowledge it or believe it. And then you can make fun of it for being ludicrous and make it obsolete. That's the that's like the tagline of the show. Backwards and upside down good advice by this wow. uh, little boy. You're, yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Someone who didn't wrestle as a kid. Yeah. That's actually great, great advice. Do you know, I saw this stat, um, people who have COVID and then long COVID. Yes. You know, long COVID, kind of like the made up thing for people that just want to complain. Exactly. It's like, oh, I got COVID like a year ago and now I can't really focus on my work. Yep. Can't, I can't really get anything done. Oh, it's like, I just kind of got lazy. <laughs> it's like you were always like that. Yeah. Um, out of people who have long COVID who are trans, one in five trans people who had COVID have long COVID. And I think it was the exact same number for bisexual as well. Yeah. So, so AKA this group just tends to complain about stuff and make excuses for stuff. The attention seeking group is seeking more attention. Mm. Oh, that COVID that was just two weeks and no big deal. It actually me- messes me up. It's now. with me forever, and yeah. now I'm, you know, I need to, to collect unemployment. I can't, I can't do my job. Yeah, um, exactly. All right, let's move on to the trans talk show. Which one's the trans talk show? Oh, yeah, this is like the drag queen something, uh, something or other. All white people are racist. Period. Point blank. End of story. You cannot be white and not racist. It's not possible because if you are born in this country, in this America, I'm all white Americans. I, I don't. I don't live in Australia, but they racist too. If you, <laughs> I've been in Australia. They are nasty. If I'm you so are white and you're raised in America, you are raised through TV, through books through every single thing to have racial bias toward white people and against people of color. White folks do Isn't not open up their history. Yeah, just a couple bros hanging out, discussing how all white people are racist. All white people are racist. Do you know the biggest hanging, uh, lynching in history was Italians in yeah, New Orleans? I, I did know that. And I don't walk around town going, oh, what happened? I don't let that hold me back from hosting my racist podcast. <laughs> I just do my thing. I don't even think about that. Yeah. 
Um, just five dudes hanging out, cocks out, talking about how white people are racist. You know, that's just America these days, boys. Mm, that literally is a slice of life right there. Microcosm, a as microcosm. they call it. Yep. Um, let's go the non-binary spouse guy. The guy in the truck. The Yellowstone meme? Yeah. All right, y'all want me to talk about my spouse's pronouns again. <laughs> okay. Here we go. I made a video like this before. Got a lot of hate for him. Dylan, my spouse, got a, a lot of hate. And it pissed me off. It was hard to watch, but I'm gonna do it again. Fuck him. All right, crash course. You ready? I am a husband, but I don't have a wife. I also don't have a husband. I have a spouse because Dylan, my person, is non-binary. Ah, what does that mean? It simply means that Dylan does not comfortably fit into either of the two gender buckets that were offered to them by their society. The cultural gender identities that are assigned to people depending Stop. on how yeah, their body I think we've seen enough. We outside. know what it is. It's all right, I'm gonna talk to you about <laughs> Dylan, my non-binary spouse. <laughs> That's this is George Soros's vision of America. Yeah. He sees that video and he gets squirts from it. He and goes, yeah. The, the, yeah. the Hicks, the, the the rednecks types. That's like on his highlight reel, like a George Soros year in review, like his highlight reel, that comes up. Yeah. That's what he wants to happen. Um, And so some people were speculating, I don't think we know for sure, that this is a little transgender uh, man. Oh, interesting. That's like a, a trans. Look at the big eyes. Big eyes and clear skin, like a little too clear. Uh, like the fake beard just from testosterone. I don't see an Adam's apple. I can't see. It's a tough angle, but I'm sure that transgender men, when they film a video, know how to hide the Adam's apple angle. It's probably mm -hmm. an angle they think about. Probably has huge scars right here. And then also the, yeah. <laughs> and then also the over the top accent. No, we're gonna talk about Dylan, my spouse, <laughs> my non-binary spouse. So, um, yeah, you're a fucking idiot, dude. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Um, let's go to the last piece of cringe. You anything else to say about Dylan? I just think that's what George, that's George Soros's vision of America was yeah, my main point for sure. Um, the Bible is BS tweet. Yeah, this is a guy who has been blowing up on. I guess right wing Twitter loves him uh -huh. because he is the worst. He's the worst. Like you know, there's Dash, there's other people, but this guy might be the biggest muppet we've ever seen. So his tweet goes, the Bible is bullshit. The Quran is bullshit or is a lie. The Bhag uh, Bhagav Bhagavad Gita. I thought it was. I thought there was one last syllable in there. Uh, the Bhagavad Gita did not fall from the sky. And then someone replies and goes, but there's such thing as a female penis. And he goes, yep, <laughs> brother. Yeah. So that's and, what we're up against. And this is him, by the way. Oh, that looks like you. That could have been used in Doppelganger. You want to pop our shirts right now? See who it's closer to? We actually we have to move on because we are <laughs> we are running out of time. But that's him. There's the amazing amazing atheist right there. Like well, swell guy. I'll take yeah. all my advice from him. And he had uh, other tweets about like girl cock and boy pussy. Mm. He he loves saying words like that just to get a rise. Yeah. Um, but so he's floating through the world with no anchor. He's tethered to nothing and no idea. I like that. Yeah. I like that's what we're up against. Me too. It's an easy, it's an easy dub, right? All right, let's move on to Urban Decay. All right, a first clip of Urban Decay, uh, the guy who's told to turn the music down, and he says it's racist. Uh, yeah, this is my favorite. Racism Sir. is still real in Georgia. I can't what believe it Bob tried me like that. My dinner? What, was it you, what was it that you was asking me before you interrupted me with my dinner? Because I turned it all the way down for you. Okay, but what was it that you was asking me? Is there a reason why you would ask me to turn my phone down when there's a band playing music that I don't give a fuck about hearing? Do you think it's appropriate for you to ask me, a 33-year-old, a black man, to turn his motherfucking phone down? You should know you shouldn't say a motherfucking thing to me. My hand shouldn't be shaking while I'm eating my motherfucking chicken. <laughs> These people do the confrontational thing and it's like, I'm going to film him and I'm phoning him and I'm the tough guy and I'm going to shame him for racism. And you're shaking while you're doing it. Yeah. Like, uh, this is my confrontation. And he has chip nail polish, which is 
never a good sign. It's usually a bad sign for girls. It's trashy. It, it goes. It, it goes. It translates across to, to gay black men. And, it's like, and so basically, what was going on there was there's a live band at the restaurant. That guy was playing his phone on loud. The 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 white guy said, "Can you turn your phone down?" And then he even said, "You asked me to turn my phone down." And the guy goes, "Yeah, I asked you to, and I appreciate." you turning it down normal man to man stuff. Right. And it's like, well, I, I'm here and they're playing a band I don't care about. And it's like, you're at a restaurant where they're playing live music, which is people are there to see. And then you're playing your phone on loud. And then someone saying, Hey, can you turn your phone down is racism. That's a proof of racism. And it's like, you can't just be like considered equal in a polite society where you can be like held to the same standards where it's like, Hey, can you turn your phone down? We're listening to this music. You can't just be that can't be a normal ass. That has to be proof of racism. And like all the obviously racism is in the news so much lately. Mm -hmm. And it's like the proof of racism we keep seeing are these like debatable scenarios which aren't very clear. And then one side's like, that's racism 100 percent. And the other side's like, well, I haven't really seen enough to call this person irredeemably racist. Yeah. <laughs> Politely asking someone to turn their phone down while live music is playing. And like that's the two sides. Do you either like, is that racist? Or it's like, well, I haven't really seen enough. I know what happened with Nick Sandman. Yeah. Like I saw what happened there. Dude, yo, uh, headphones, $10. Yeah. Imagine playing your phone loud in a, like a restaurant anywhere. What, would you have so much shame and embarrassment over that? I couldn't. And imagine what he's listening to, like a Tariq Nasheed video or something. And that's why we need to eliminate <laughs> the white people. Yeah, exactly. So that asking someone to turn the phone down is racism. You can't just hold people to a nice, normal standard. And there's a certain thing about the shaky, confrontational thing. Like, this guy knows he's not right. Why, why would you ask me as a 33-year-old black man? It's like, as a 33-year-old black man, you should really know by now that in society... People don't really like your phone at, at full volume. Yeah. You know? Uh, and there's a certain type of person who plays their phone or speakers or stuff at loud volume with no headphones. Yeah. And that, you know, I don't know what kind. You guys probably recognize some patterns out there. I don't know. Very easy to recognize patterns. <laughs> uh, next, let's play the guy who got mobs and he's in his car just hoping nothing bad happens. There's society. There's society in one in one five second video where it's basically if he does anything, if he beeps the horn, if he tries to drive, his car is getting smashed up. Yeah. If he does nothing, <clears throat> his car might be getting smashed his up. His car's already getting dinged up a little bit from them. Yeah. But it's okay because his his ancestors are probably racist. Yeah. 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 Uh it, it reminds me of the meme like uh, oh, I don't see race. And then it's like race seeing you. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, they see a white guy in a car, they're gonna fuck with you a little bit. Yeah. City's um, alive tonight. Yeah, I went to my my my, my taco truck. I got my eight dollar coffee. The, the the young people are out and about. <laughs> they cornered me. They surrounded me. It was a vibrant city, <laughs> a dynamic environment. Yeah, yeah, my one bedroom apartment's four thousand dollars. Hey, a should month. we should we move to the country? What miss all this? <laughs> you know, like dude, come on. Uh, let's play that racism exercise, like that corporate racism exercise that was done. Yeah, this is a good uh, delusional. This should be in the delusional section that we haven't created yet. Yeah. Would you rather be a white person in a black neighborhood in need of help or a black person in a white neighborhood in need of help? And no one goes to that side. Nobody's on As the side. If. That last video was a black, was a white guy in a black neighborhood who needed some help. Yeah. <laughs> he needed, he needed uh, a crossing guard. I'd be like, oh, wave him through. Yeah, how'd that go? Um, here's the funny thing. They want that question. And this is like, I've I've done one of those. Mm. Yeah, I've done one of those corporate trainings where they made you walk across the room for whatever to discover biases and do this. Humiliating, humiliation experience. Um, it's a, to break white people. Oh, yeah. It's to break you. Um, and I obviously wasn't broke. Here I am. Um, but... The whole thing of that is they want you to picture being a black person or a white person, right? And it's like, well, it's probably easier to get help as a white person, right? You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be a black person in a white neighborhood. But they don't want you to think too much about the neighborhoods. They, yeah, they don't want you to go. Wait, that white neighborhood? They probably, they're probably pretty nice. They Flat help. tire in the suburbs. Hey, oh, Mike's got a jack. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Uh, so they don't want you to think about that too much. But I know what neighborhood I'd like to be in. You know, yeah, me too. Pretty, I know which neighborhood's probably nicer. But if you were the one guy standing on the other side of that in the whole thing and just starting a debate, like you'd be on an HR, like they'd write you down. There'd be a footnote on your folder. 
And then, like, any if you can get fired for anything in the next 18 months, you're fired. They'll take it. Yeah, yeah. they'll take and it. And you're the problem. And then everyone else after that is thinking the same way. So people, corporations and universities pay thousands of thousands of dollars to have some 100 and, mm, not, 105 IQ black woman come in and do this exercise with you. Mm-hmm. They pay thousands for the privilege to teach you this shit. Yeah. Um, so uh, reject that. Yeah, exactly. Moving on, this next part of Urban, this next page of Urban Decay, mm-hmm. is like the theme is everyone's making excuses for black crime. Okay. Uh, so the first one, the guy was in a 135-mile-per-hour uh, police chase, and then the, the helicopter crashed and two cops died. Yeah, so this is actually kind of an interesting story. Uh, this guy was fleeing from the police in Baton Rouge. He, uh, It was like 2 in the morning to 3 in the morning where he was fleeing from police. He was going up to 135 miles an hour in his car, driving away. He lost the police, but then he ran out of gas and like abandoned his car and had someone help him go get gas and blah, 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 come back. But the chase itself prompted a police helicopter into the air. The police helicopter was trying to find him crashed. So two policemen died trying to get this guy running from the cops, trying to get this guy who was running from and the people cops on Twitter and so are he, blaming the cops. And so he got charged with murder two X because, uh, it was two in the morning. The police chopper wasn't out just, uh, and I assume that actually, I don't know that for a fact, but the police chopper's not just out at 2 AM going, who do we got? What are we waiting yeah. for? So the, the police chopper lifted off because of this guy, he gets charged with murder. Here's one of the tweets in a reply just from some dummy. It goes, if he can be charged with murder because they decided to pursue him, what is the holdup for the reparations that he is missing? So he won't have to commit crimes in the first place. (laughs) Oh, that's so true. (laughs) Oh, God, brilliant. Would you run from the cops if you had reparations? Well, you know, whenever I don't have money, I need to flee the scene of a a crash at 135 miles an hour. That's my immediate instinct when I'm broke. It's not like, how do I get a job? How do I get the next, how do I pay rent? It's always flee from the scene of a crime at 135 miles an that hour. That you were involved in, yeah. It, exactly, that you caused. So that's kind of my take, my point, which Mimetic Sisyphus again brought this to our attention. Yeah, he did. Um, Are there any other tweets? Um, no, no other tweets about that. But there, there was, I think, a page full of like dumb tweets. Yeah. And basically the whole thing was, he shouldn't be charged for this. He shouldn't be blah, blah, blah. They shouldn't have pursued him. Exactly. Like they shouldn't be chasing criminals. It's the cop's fault for pursuing that crime. Yeah. Next, uh, there was a tweet uh, thread about how crime in New York City is bad because the libraries are closed. Well, it was a quote tweet of this original tweet. It said, uh, Eyewitness News tweets, NYC public libraries could close on weekends due to possible Adams administration budget cuts. You know, they're spending so much on illegal aliens that are being sent up Mm -hmm. there, illegal immigrants. And so, you know, the budget's budget's a little tight in New York. Uh, And then some random guy goes, this is fucking unacceptable in the wealthiest city in the nation, in the heart of fucking global capital. The black cop mayor is stealing money from libraries to give to cops so they can arrest black kids who have nowhere to go so he can go on TV and complain about crime. Yeah, which is which is interesting because you know how it goes. Let's go to the library. Doors locked. It's closed on Saturday. <laughs> Time to go. <laughs> Let's go do some crime. Let's go rob the bodega. So the crime is bad because the kids can't go to the library to hang out. But then you think, wait a sec. Isn't the literacy rate horrible in New York City? I looked at some of the stats. 85% of eighth graders can't do math. 82% of eighth graders can't read at the proper level. So, so yeah, they love renting DVDs at the library. <laughs> yeah, it's because the libraries aren't closed, where everyone loves to hang out and learn, probably. And we'll, we'll say the mimetic Sisyphus, his quote tweet on this, which is how we found it. In the progressive mind, there are a large amount of young black kids who would have avoided a life of crime if only the library was open a few extra hours. Meanwhile, like multiple schools have a 0% literacy rate where no one can read. Like they're forced to go there for eight hours a day and they still can't read. And you think like the library on Saturday is the answer to stopping crime. What do they do all day in school if you can't read? Like that was the thing we talked about before. I think they play on their phones discreetly. They they go go on TikTok and they vape, I think. Yeah, I think it's all vaping. It's all the next bathroom vape break. Yeah, and then TikTok, and then they probably fight or, like, start fights or, like, plan fights. Yeah. Uh, and then the whole No Child Left Behind thing, you think that sounds, like, reasonable, like, oh, yeah. yeah no like, child should get left behind, No child right? left behind. And then all you're doing is removing the standards. So it's, like, in a world 
maybe 20 years ago where if a seventh grader can't read, they do seventh grade over again until they can read. And instead, now it's no child left behind. That kid just gets sent through. And now you have kids in high school who can't literally can't read. So you can't teach them. And you have like this whole problematic group of people who are like stuck progressing, even though they're not progressing. And it's like, imagine having someone in your class who can't read, can't do anything. You're in a math class where they're using letters in math now. Yeah. You got to algebra, right? They're Johnny using, has 10 apples. And you, you're like, you, who? And you can't <laughs> read. And you're doing algebra. And it's like, what? do you think that kid's like helping the class? Or do you think he's an absolute just... Uh, monster like being like fuck this like yeah i'm frustrated exactly and, like, causing the other students not to learn you know and the no child left behind makes it seem like it's the one kid who would have got left back who's not now not being left behind and it's actually all the kids no child left behind is actually multiple and it's just like justifying they're all stupid them now through. they're all stupid no one can read and they're all going through the next level imagine going like on like a test day and going through the tests of like say like a sophomore in high school and it's like and it's just nonsense. <laughs> it's hieroglyphics to you. And, and you're looking at it like, oh my gosh, this is real nonsense. And then you look up and you see the teachers and the students realize they, they know you know. Then they all start circling and closing in on you <laughs> because you know the secret. Oh, man. Yeah. So uh, that's why all the stuff in Target's behind the glass now. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it was the police's fault for chasing the helicopter. They shouldn't have done that. They should have let him get away with the crime. And then, you know, the library's fault for all the youth crime in New York. Yeah. So, sorry, we guys. More. We failed you. We have more. We have a whole other page of more excuses for these crimes. Uh, Alabama mass shooting. Yeah. Didn't hear much about this in the news. We talked about it last week a little bit. A little right? bit, yeah. yeah. So it's getting zero news coverage, but some facts are coming out that are like uh, more crazy, right? Um, yep. So uh, we're do we're having a chance to look at it. Mass shootings, right? When, when how many mass shootings have three guys? You know, very few. You had the homies, and it was like, yeah, we could do a mass shooting. Like, let's yeah. light it up. So that's crazy. That doesn't happen in very many cultures. The last dual mass shooter was probably Columbine or something, yeah, right? Yeah, that was I, multiple. I don't remember. Um, and so four children dead and 32 injured at a Sweet 16 party. Um, 32 injured and four dead makes it sound like they just, like, tried to mow everyone down and do a massacre and they, kill everybody. They were doing this. They were letting the recoil determine who got shot next. Yeah. Um, and so... 89 rounds were fired from seven different guns. So they were like switching guns, doing a mass shooting at this uh, Sweet 16 party. Anti-gun people, David Hogg, haven't seen David. Haven't yeah. seen David. Uh, Kamala. Those were illegal guns too. It, of course, of course. Um, so nobody cares about it when there's a white 32 on- 32 injured. There's a white on black shooting. It's just show up at their house. Yeah. When there's this, it's, oh, I don't, I don't know. We, yeah, we don't know what happened. The library closed early, so <laughs> yeah. they had to shoot. They had nowhere to go. So, yeah, I mean, just insane. Uh, and we obviously know this. We're beating a dead horse here. The media does what the media does. It's your job to talk about this to your friends and small red pill people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, well, why didn't that get any coverage? You know, me and Fleckus, we've been watching, paying attention to the, to the bullshit playbook with our uh, John Nada sunglasses on for 10 years, you know? Yeah. And so it's like, when these things happen, you have to point them out to your normie friends a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. do you hear about that? Yeah. yeah 32 why why shot. do you think we didn't hear about that? Why do you think, why, uh, sh shouldn't MSNBC be leading with that? And then once you open their eyes to it, like not only are, is the media lying, they're also lying by omission, things that they're not talking about. That's then a huge part of it. You open your eyes to it and then you're like, that you go from trusting to zero trust even if it's true. Like, all right, now whenever the CNN tells me something, I don't even know if that's true. What are they hiding? What are they not telling us? Like, that is a really big red pill for people. And then in regards to that, I actually wrote this down last week um, because the censorship version, too, a lot of times you think of censorship on social media or whatever as like, I say this fact about COVID, this medicine will work, right? Mm -hmm. And they're saying it won't work. Uh, and they just delete me, delete my post and say, no, 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 whatever. But they also do it for things that make other people look bad. Like the, they'd love to censor that, like the four drag queen dudes saying all white people are racist. They love for that not to get the spread. Cause a lot of times these people have these Marxist ideologies, right? Mm -hmm. And then they, and like what you learn in a classroom Marxist wise, they don't go that far. 
But your brain does, right? If you're on Marxism, your brain on Marxism, you'll go, yeah, all white people are racist. You'll make that jump. The academics won't, but they don't want you to see that piece. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's another version of censorship by omission, I guess. Yeah. Like they want you to keep to keep that down. When whereas they you, don't, they don't. You most yeah. traditionally think of it as censoring like a fact or something, but they limit distribution on shit that makes that side look terrible too. Yeah. So like the Marxist students going out and exclaiming. It's like that's what happens, but they don't necessarily want to promote that, but they know that's going to happen. They want that to happen. Exactly. Uh, let's go to the kid stealing the car. Little businessman. Here's a little businessman. Bro, it's not going in, bro. I just don't like this shit, bro. So I guess the library is closed. He just tried to go to the New York Public Library. Door was locked. He goes, what the hell? Now, he's got something going here. He's kind of like a little entrepreneur. Yeah. Bro, you don't like shit, bro. Kind of an engineer. He likes to work with cars. He works well under pressure. The willingness to film yourself doing a felony is a little bit of a red flag. And he gets the car on in 42 seconds. That's not that's not a bad uh, that's a little bit of a resume. That's a skill, I guess. Yeah, I'm an engineer. I like to work with cars. I do well under pressure. He's got he's got something going for him yeah. in a different world. Yeah. And then the cops the clown probably, world. Yeah, exactly. The cops will probably show up and then just leave and not arrest anyone. We notice that in New Orleans too. We have like this funny running joke where whenever you see a cop interaction with someone who probably should be arrested, it's always they let them go, and they're like, "We got to go uptown somewhere else to <laughs> let someone else go. <laughs> yeah. We have to let someone else go somewhere else. You know, we don't have time for this." Um, so that was pretty good. That kid's got uh, that kid's bright future places. in front of him. In and out, in and out of the pen. There you know. was a uh, a John Doyle tweet that mm -hmm. I thought was pretty interesting. He was talking about like crime and looking up to certain people in society. What is it? He said, for white kids to stop imitating the behavior of black gangsters, I wish we could bring back cowboys, Vikings, knights, mobsters, etc. in pop culture. All provide the general violence and aesthetics which are attractive yet also retain varying degrees of honor slash class, which thugs don't. Which is very true. We noticed that with the thugs. It's like they'll, they'll stomp your head. They'll kick you when you're unconscious. They'll just keep punching your dead body. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is some honor and integrity in cowboys and mobsters and Vikings. Yeah, which is lacking. So it's like if you're going to look up to some sort of villain type or, you know, violent person, it'd be nice to look up to a violent person with some honor. Yeah, it's like has the, a code. It's like a known. Th and I mean, this is obviously cinematography. This is the movies. But like Tony Soprano, it's like, you know, they don't go after families, Carm. You know, they don't attack families. And then it's like Chicago, three year old shot. Yeah. Like three year old shot, six year old, blah, blah, blah. Just driving, you know. Exactly. All oh, right. Speaking of that, right? Do we want to move to the? We're kind of running out of time. Okay. Which uh, which clip is it? The I was going to say the Chicago uh, teens who face a misdemeanor charge after killing a baby with a stolen car. Yeah. So you see that one. So kids stole a car, they crashed it, and they killed a baby, and then they got off on they got released immediately and a misdemeanor. So they stole a car, killed a baby, misdemeanor. They're underage. Um, and so uh, we were talking about this off screen a little bit and it's just like, yo, you know how the white guy shot the black kid, uh, at his door and he was 85 years old and scared and didn't know what was happening. And they immediately protested him and blah, 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 just because mm -hmm. of the race. It's like an instance like this is legitimately what you would need a protest for. Right? Yeah. Like a horrible miscarriage of justice Two teenagers who knew exactly what they were doing and stealing a car and driving fast. They know it's not GTA. They know what they're doing is wrong. And they kill someone and they get the like, oh, suspended sentence or misdemeanor or maybe a year in juvie until you turn 18. And yeah, like this is a situation where people should really go to jail. Yeah. You know, and so and actually have a protest and actually be upset. Mm -hmm. But if it's a black person getting let go, that's good. Don't worry about because it. Because there's so many black people locked up. So like that's good. It's like a win for them. It's exactly. like they do a crime. They kill someone. And them getting let go is a, a win in their mind, which is actually crazy. Backards. Very backards. All right, let's move on to Uplifting Gold. Can't get too down and too depressed. Um, if you guys are watching at this I, point. I never get that depressed. Neither like, do I. I. Like, I, I, I just laugh say at that. it. I laugh at it, and I look, and, you know, but yeah, I, I know what you mean. I just say that. Um, and we also, it's nice to show uplifting things to not forget, not get too down. 
for them. I don't get down. 100%. But if we had a show of just all negative stuff, it'd be like, yo, you guys are really making people feel bad. Yeah. But we're making people laugh, we're too, making people right? Laugh Isn't too. that the kind of the point? And we're showing the stories that don't get told, <laughs> and we end it with uplifting stuff that's cultural, that makes everyone feel better, and leave on a positive note. Smart. But if you're like the majority of the people who stop watching by halfway, <laughs> you just get depressed every week. Oh, you get the good stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. All right, let's go to um, – we have a basketball part of Uplifting Gold. The kid who makes the shot while the band's going by. Oh, yeah. This is good. Kid in his driveway. Shooting hoops, not on his computer. He makes it. Band plays. That's a great experience. That's Americana, baby. That's Americana. And let's go to the basketball miracle ending. This is a crazy end. Seven the score. Four point difference. Five point two left. Five point two seconds left. Inbound. Swung around. Jump shot. He's going. Makes it. Ryan Immediate Savoy turnaround three. Cuts it to one. And then JC has it. Floater. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Jason Taylor wow. with the buzzer. That might be the best ending in the game ever. I That might be. Because I've never seen a game that close, that fast. Me either. Four-point swing, five-point swing. In 5.2 seconds? Yeah, that was crazy. That was really crazy. Um, all right, let's move on. You play basketball? You good at basketball? I played when I was little, and then for one winter season, I did wrestling instead. I didn't like basketball. Yeah, too too bulky. I was a little bulky. And then I played when I was little, and I was good. And we had a hoop at our house, and I would always play. Um, but I never got into like the point where you're, you have plays where you're actually good. Yeah, it was just like yeah. kids running around shooting. Like I played when I was like up until like sixth grade. Okay. Okay. Uh, but fine. I'm athletic. Oh, I can, move on, I can oh. move on the court. Okay. Okay. I thought this was yeah. uplifting gold. Yeah. I'm trying to be positive about it. Um, the guy who says no to drag queen story hour. Love this guy. Yeah. I'm going to ask some people some questions, Spanish and English. Let's go. And especially even in my school, it's so sad how they implemented all that, like, that gay and trans. There's, how do you there, feel? As a kid, how do you feel? What, what do you want to do as a kid? I want to, like, live a kid as long as I, like, it's, because I'm ready, like, time is going by so fast. And I don't want to grow up in a world where I can't even, I look at someone and, like, I, someone on the street and I wonder, oh, are they, are they, gay? like, you know, all those different type of flags or, you know, Right. Genders. And I'm gonna. I, I don't. So yeah. you, you are basically saying you just want to live your life as a kid. Yeah, and I don't want to have all that. Like it's so sad how they implemented already. Kids in my class, there's like two kids in my class who say, "Oh, they're lesbian," and they identify as like furries or animals. And it's like sad right. how. Yeah. yeah. Stepping up. Based. An abomination. His kids aren't doing crimes. You know what? I love that. And, Me too. And, and it's just like you know, go shit on their little parade. Their little stupid thing that they're doing. He's not bothering anybody. Like, uh, obviously he is, but like, he's not doing anything illegal. He's just saying his piece and then he's going to leave. He's saying his piece to all the masked parents who suck and brought their kids to some stupid thing for no educational value to hear a fat guy talk about two mommies and two daddies. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, come on. A you fat gotta, guy in glam makeup. Exactly. Got to give a shout out to the guy who's going to stand up and talk shit directly, calmly to their faces. Yeah, that's so key. We'll send you a base mug if that's you, sir. Yeah. Um, the missed the pitch for gender reveal. This one's old, but, you know. I never saw it. This guy's doing a gender reveal. His wife tees him up, and he takes the pitch. He takes the pitch. <laughs> that's pretty good. Uh, but the kid will be not that athletic. He gets mad. He threw it at my chest. <laughs> It's and she did. She botched it. But, yeah. you know, come on, swing away, Meryl. It's not, you don't get another chance at this. I have a PSYOP theory. Okay. Remember like a year or two ago when gender reveals were really popular and everyone was saying how cringe they were? Yes. And everyone got made fun of for doing gender reveals? Yeah, over the top, like shooting a gun at a, a Tannerite thing that and exploded it was like, blue. It's too much, right? Yeah. Oh, are you doing too much with the gender reveals? That could have been a PSYOP to get us thinking gender reveals were, were cringe so we don't genderize the kids. Because those people doing gender reveals, like you have a girl, you, yeah. have a, you have a you have a boy, a boy, you know, you're raising a boy. But now what they want people to do is be like, oh, I don't know what he is until he tells me. Yeah. So it's like if they make gender reveals cringe, 
it's easier for them to say, oh, gender reveals are cringe. And obviously, we don't know what the gender is until the kid tells us. (laughs) Second part, obviously, we don't know. (laughs) So it's like a slippery slope. They put you on the slope and they they, they grease it up a little bit. Oh, yeah. It could it could help society in their like in their mind to help make society how they want it. So it's like, oh, yeah, gender reveals are cringe and. But obviously, we don't know the gender yet. But also, the uh, the alternate point to that is that I don't think gender reveal parties were ever big before like 2014, right? Yeah. Like, didn't or they kind of more recent pop yeah. out of nowhere? You yeah, know? they did. They did. So, all right, let's move on. Uh, the skier falls into the sinkhole. That was a crazy clip from this week. This yeah, guy's it's just a, going I, downhill. I guess it's a glacier, is what they say. Yeah, he falls in, and then he starts getting eaten up by it. Wow. He's okay. I don't know who gets him out. He just takes his skis off and walks out. Does he? I think. How? Where's the stairs? He just kind of come out the way you came in. Okay. I'll take your word on that one. Um, <laughs> all right. Let's do the grandpa does the dice snap. This was funny. See that? Star. Plus. <laughs> they don't teach him that. <laughs> yeah. Four, five, six. Yeah. <laughs> don't teach him that. That's funny. We grew up, uh, I grew up playing dice a lot. I never did. I never had that. So There was one time at Brady's house where his parents were away and we had like a day party on like Saturday mm-hmm. and his parents were out of town and I had a fake fur coat. I had, uh, we were drinking 40s. Of course. I had, uh, we had dice. We were rolling. I had fake jewelry. Me and the boys, we were rolling dice in the street. My car had subwoofers in it. <laughs> so we had the, the trunk up and we were playing music in a fake fur coat, rolling dice in the street. Hot hand in a dice game. Yeah. It was pretty funny. Yeah. It was at Brady's house when his parents were out of town one time. Um, and also, my parents like fought me so hard to not get subwoofers in the car. And I was like begging them. I did whatever I could, and I eventually convinced them by basically saying, like, if I get if I get into college for football and I get accepted before senior year, I get to get speakers. And they're like, fine. Mm-hmm. You guys were right. I was wrong about that. Yeah, subwoofers were stupid. I should not have had them. It shook the whole car. Couldn't even enjoy the music. Wasn't very cool. That was a huge thing for our age, though, to get obnoxious subwoofers yeah. and uh, uh, custom speakers. I don't yeah. know why. I don't know why either. But it was very embarrassing. So to my parents, I'm sorry. You were right. I was wrong. Once again, subwoofers were not a good idea. Personal apology. Yeah. At the end of the show. All right. Well, that's the end of Fluckus Talks, the podcast, episode 79. Thank Other you very Fluckus much. Talks in the books. Thank you guys for Are you going to do your freestyle? <laughs> no. No, I don't. Okay. Alex Stein does a freestyle before at the end of every show. Yep. Which is, is like my nightmare because I like to script what I write and script what I say. I would not want to do a freestyle. Yep. Okay. So no freestyle for me. Maybe one day I'll write one and we'll do it. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Fleckusmerch.com for the best merch in the game. Support my Patriot Supply. Please support us. Get your emergency food kits. It's very important. And as always, join us in bonus land. If you guys are here watching at this point, go into the description. Click patreon.com slash Fleckus. Put your info in bonus land there's a bonus land episode coming out on monday it's always at least 30 minutes it's very fun great group of people join us in bonus land thank you guys for watching we'll see you at the next one